I hiked 425 kilometers or 264 miles up over 20,800 meters or 68,000 feet without any sunscreen. Hi there, my name's David. I'm an adventure filmmaker from Vancouver Island. I recently did a road trip across the United States doing multiple hikes. I filmed 50 hiking episodes, which I'm still uploading now, but I did the whole thing without sunscreen. Let me show you how. Now you might be thinking, oh, where did you hike? Well, I hiked in Colorado, multiple 13ers, 14ers, up high elevation in the sun. I also hiked in Moab where it was 42 degrees Celsius or 105 degrees Fahrenheit, and I used no sunscreen. Now it's pretty brutal hiking in that, those conditions regardless, but, <laughs> and it's definitely warm when you're wearing full clothes, but I didn't get burned. So to hike without sunscreen, there's three main components. First thing, we don't need this. First, we got the sun hoodie, we got our pants, and we've got a hat. Those are the main three things. We'll also talk about our hands. So first off, the sun hoodie. Sun hoodie is essential because it basically protects your arms. I don't, I'm not a scientist. I don't know if it makes a big difference if you have, this has like UV protected material versus just a normal long sleeve athletic shirt. I don't know if there's a difference there, but I'll link up what I use in the description and what, you know, what I would be wanting to buy if I was buying something new. Now, I've been using my stuff for a long time. I use this one most of the time, this gray one, because I find it doesn't get as hot as my blue one or my black one. So I have three of these, and I only use those ones if this one's really dirty. Um, as for my pants, I'm uh, rocking here some Lululemon 15-year-old pants. Uh, these are running pants. They were created generation one when Lululemon was a brand new company in Vancouver. They were designed in Vancouver, made in Vancouver for running in the rain. So for this reason, they last about an hour in the rain without soaking through. And this kind of correlates with my uh, blue jacket that I'm not wearing right now, but I have a Patagonia jacket, which is kind of flexible. It's like, I don't know how many, a couple layers of Gore-Tex. It basically soaks through in about an hour as well. Like we're talking pouring rain. So if I'm wearing these and my blue jacket, I always know I have about an hour of pouring rain before I'm gonna start getting wet. And hopefully I've uh, prepared accordingly if I'm in a situation where it's gonna be more than that. So um, as for pants though, obviously I can't link these up because they're 15 years old. And as you can see, they're getting shredded. Um, I do need to fix these. And this will be the third time of sewing these up and fixing these. But what I would recommend is you want to find pants like this that have a zipper on the side. So you can see I can zip these down and you get a ton of airflow once you open up the side. It's kind of like wearing shorts, not quite. It's not as good as wearing shorts, but you're not going to get burned. That's the whole point is hiking in the summer and not getting uh, burned. So if you can find some that zip like this, or if you can get the ones that have uh, a zipper along the whole way and you can zip off the whole bottom so you can wear shorts. Um, I would use those in situations where it's an overcast day. It looked like it was going to be sunny, but it's not. Then, you know, zip them off and enjoy them. Your legs won't get burned. So for sun hoodie itself, you know, just get something that's comfortable. Um, you want, obviously, it's something that covers your arms. I have done the arm, uh, those arm extension things. You wear a normal shirt that cuts off here and then you wear these arm sleeves. But I always find there's like, this part here slides down. There's a bit of a gap and it, it just sometimes gets bunched up. You have to remember, where's my sleeves? It just became too much of a hassle. I just went with the sun hoodie. It's been so much better since. But something else to note with uh, pants, I have pockets on these pants. They're just normal pockets. You can stick your hand in. There's no zippers or anything. The back is just a normal uh, kind of whatever, folding pocket. There's no, no, nothing, no zippers. And that's the whole point is I lost my cell phone up when I was doing Ice Lake and it was halfway down the mountain and it was my birthday. I was gonna get the best drone shots of my life <laughs> and I didn't have my phone. I didn't know where it was and I hiked halfway back down that mountain. I found my phone randomly in the woods. I had stepped off to take a, a pee in the woods there and it was just randomly, it, it just somehow popped out of my pocket. So what does this all have to do with pants? Get yourself some pants with the zippers. I, uh, for my entire trip, I do not, after that happened, I would not put anything in my pockets. It didn't matter what it was because I have a new rule now, there's never anything in my pockets when I hike. Uh, that would change though if I had pants with zippers. If I could secure it, especially the, the side ones and the back, um, then I would definitely go with that because it just gives you, you know, more easy access storage, you know, snacks and stuff, as well as your cell phone, as long as you can zip it shut. Now the final piece of this is the hat. Now, if you wear just a normal hat, you know, obviously you're not gonna get the same sort of coverage as this hat. Now these hats do look kind of goofy and that's kind of the, the trade-off you've got to you know, go with when you're wearing a hat like this. I've had two of these hats. If you are a longtime follower, you'll notice I had a, another hat when I was doing uh, 
a hike in Wenatchee called Saddle Rock. It flew off my, ha off my head at the top and uh, I just rogue gust of wind came up and blew it over. I almost dove for it. Good thing I didn't because I would have died <laughs> for a 300 foot fall. Uh, I did, I think I found it on the side of the mountain with my drone, uh, but there's no way for me to get it. You have to repel and get that. So I end up buying this one, which is a uh, outdoor research from REI in uh, Boise, Idaho. And luckily they had this because I was, I'm, I just rely on a sun hat so badly when I go hiking. So this one uh, is nice. It's a little different than my other one. I'll compare the two. Um, obviously I don't have the other one in my hand to show you, but basically this one's got two buckles on it. You can unbuckle this and take off the skirt thing that goes around it. So you can wear it just as a normal hat and it looks good. It's a good looking hat by itself. Um, the back here, it's just a, uh, one of these Velcros that holds on the skirt thing. So it slips through there pretty easily. Um, you know, you just pull this through. I always leave it on there. I never take this off though, cause I'm always just like wearing this as a full protection uh, sun hat. And there's a reason for this. This one's actually designed a little better than my other one. So the other one I had was similar. It had like, I think four or five buckles along the back to hold on the sun hat part. And then it had a couple Velcros. So it was a little bit different. It had one extra piece that this one doesn't have. So this hat, basically it, it, when you have it open like this, it's super free and like airy. And as long as the sun is not coming directly in front, you're not gonna get, you know, your neck burned. If it's coming from the side or the back, you can wear it like this and it's totally fine. If it's coming from the front, you can just zip it up like that. And then basically the angle of this, it pretty much, it protects everything. Like I didn't get burned at all. There wasn't like some weird line or something where I got burned on my hike. So I quite like this hat. It worked out really well. But uh, my other hat, if you've seen my Albert Edward video, when I was going up the summit block, it was just, the sun was in my face, is blasting me. I had to put the other piece on and it covers your face like this. And there's a metal wire you can bend over your face. I actually still have that piece because it wasn't attached to my hat when it flew off the cliff. So I could potentially try to sew it onto this one or sew on a buckle or something, but it basically you just bend it over your nose and then it would like clip in under here. So you would have, essentially what I just figured out is if you did this. Now what I'm realizing is Outdoor research, if you're watching, you should put a buckle right there because then you can just clasp that and you'd get the same effect. Then you can just, uh, you know, like that, you'd be able to protect your face. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put a buckle on this right there to get that same effect. But uh, the other hat wasn't nearly as airy and kind of comfortable as this one. This one, you know, you can open it up like this and I mostly just hike like this with it loose and it's really comfortable and you can also just, you know, toss it off like that and just have it dangle, which I do a lot of the time if the cloud comes in. And one other thing, because I lost my hat, I figured out if you have your hat on, what you do is you take this thing, if you have one of these, these drawstrings, uh, I'm pretty sure my old one did, but what you do is you take your, your sternum strap and you put it through and then you buckle it in. Now if a rogue gust of wind comes and blows this thing off, it's not going anywhere. So I hiked the rest of my way, uh, like, I think it was, I was into hike number three or four when I lost my initial hat and I did the, the remaining like 47 like this with it attached to my sternum strap because I wasn't gonna lose my hat again. It's quite stressful and these are, these are really rare to find in stores. Yeah, the only store I could find this in was an REI. And the initial one I got was off of Amazon. Now for my hands, they never get burnt. They just get a nice golden color and they'll never get past that. But if you're someone who does have hands who burn, I would recommend just bringing a small pair of thin gloves or you can get some like gloves for climbing uh, rock and scrambling. That way you can just use those to cover your hands if they do start getting burned. So that's basically how I hiked uh, 425 kilometers or about 50 hikes around there uh, with no sunscreen whatsoever over the past three months. So hopefully you get a little bit of out of this. Uh, I'll link up all my stuff that I use. Obviously I can't link up the pants, but I'll find something that's quite similar and link that up in the description below if you wanna check it out. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Uh, if you wanna check out my other content, obviously I've got <laughs> about 50 hiking videos coming up. I've uploaded about 16, 17 of them so far. So there's many more to come as well as some other review and other content. So be sure to subscribe for that. And until the next one, have a great day.